remember once when I was a student prior, I went to visit a woman named Catherine. And Catherine was celebrating her 90th birthday. So I went and I said, you know, congratulations on your 90th birthday. And she said, ah. <laughs> Why are you saying that? And she says, because I plan to live only to 80, and that's the way I spend my money. <laughs> Once said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what your plans are. We can plan many things, and it's not a bad thing. Planning is an important part of life, an important part of being human, as long as we remember that no matter how much we plan, things are going to go the way they're going to go, sometimes very much according to our plan, and sometimes completely different. But when we look at that as Christians, we say, well, God is working us when we plan and when things go well, and God is working us when what we plan doesn't happen well, or doesn't go the way we wanted it to, or takes us in a completely different direction. Because we believe the Holy Spirit is part of our lives now to help us to live the gospel of Jesus in the world in which we find ourselves in our own lives and our own circumstances. And that's not just true for us as individuals, that's true for us as a parish community, that's true for us as a church. We need to plan, but we also need to be open to the Holy Spirit to take us ways we never thought, because that's what we see happens in the Acts of the Apostles, and especially in today's reading. When Jesus rose from the dead and told the Apostles, go and preach the good news to every nation, they didn't sit down and have it planned out. Well, this week we'll go to Jerusalem, then maybe we can go to Samaria, and then to Galilee, and eventually we'll go, eventually we'll even go to Rome. No, that's it. They said, okay, what do we need to do? And it was the Holy Spirit in the different circumstances that led the church to know what they were supposed to do. And especially this whole question of those who listen to the Word of God as Gentiles, those who were not part of the Jewish people, the Jewish faith. And again, it wasn't that the apostles said, let's map this out and go preach to the Gentiles. What happened is as the preaching was going, some of the Gentiles heard that preaching and started to respond. And as the Acts of the Apostles tell us, a centurion, a Roman centurion, had a vision from God and called Peter, St. Peter over and said, you know, I want to hear more about this Jesus. I want to hear about more about his way. And as Peter was telling him, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit came upon him, Cornelius and all his household. And Peter said, well, the Holy Spirit's on them. How can we not baptize them? And they baptized them. But then a question came up. Do they have to be circumcised and do they have to follow all the prescriptions of the law of Moses? And there was disagreement over that. As we hear today, there's some that said, of course they do. And others say, no, if the Holy Spirit came to them without, you know, them, them becoming all, with all the Jewish law and everything, that means that God is going beyond that. And there was a big debate. St. Luke, who always tries to make things, you know, sound unpleasant, even says there was so much contention that they sent them to Jerusalem to talk to the apostles to figure out what's the answer. And the apostles and the rest of the church, through prayer and through deliberation and reflection on the message of Jesus, became convinced that the Holy Spirit was guiding the church to say, no, they don't need to be circumcised and accept the Jewish law to be part of the way of Jesus Christ. But that came out of a question coming up and debate about it Attention even. Which means the first thing I'd like to say is don't worry when there are disagreements and we have things that come up. I mean, ideally, it'd be nice if everybody agreed on everything all the time, but I, I'm really convinced where you have uh, two people together, you have three opinions. So. <laughs> but we do believe that the Holy Spirit works within the church works within our lives to help us to try to live that faith of Jesus and say, what does it mean now? 
because that's a very important thing about believing in the power of the Holy Spirit among us is we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We believe in his teachings. We believe in the word and in the sacraments the Lord has given us. But we believe we have to try to live them within the context of the world in which we find ourselves. And you might be surprised to know that scripture does not say anything about how you should drive. <laughs> but isn't that part of trying to live out the message of Jesus? Trying to drive with care, with charity, with patience. The Gospels don't say anything about how you should use the internet. But is there a Christian way to use it and a non-Christian way? Yes. And we need the Holy Spirit to help guide us to say, I don't want to say this, but I will. What would Jesus post? <laughs> But see, these are important questions. Because it's not like we have the Gospels over here, and our faith over here, and then the rest of our life over here. If the Gospels are not helping us live our life over here, then what good are they? But we believe that Jesus came with a message for all ages, and we believe that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to say, how do we leave that message now? where we are, in our own lives, in our own families. You know, that wonderful commandment Jesus gives, you know, love one another as I have loved you. I can love people very easily in the abstract. I have to learn how to love them in the concrete situations of my life within my family, for me, within our religious community, you know, within the parish here, within our bigger community here in the valley, our community, you know, our, our, our society here. That's what we have to learn how to love. And we believe that that's why the gift of the Holy Spirit is so important. It teaches how do we learn how to love here and now with this person, with this situation, with this new technology, Technologies are neither good nor bad in themselves, it's how we use them. At the novitiate, you know, we try to help, and of course, it's a generation coming up, growing up with all this now, that has to help the world figure out, how do we use the internet contemplatively? How do you use the internet as a means of evangelization? How do we use the internet to fulfill that command that Jesus gave us to go and proclaim the good news to all the nations? We know it doesn't happen automatically. We know that there are ways that these things can be used for terrible damage. But we believe in the Holy Spirit there is a way that the good news can be part of our lives and part of the way we live each day. And that's why we come together for the Mass for this time of reflection, so we can remember that, so we can take a moment away from it all, away from our cares of every day, away from all the things that are around us. Just take a few moments to let God speak to us again in His Word, in His sacrament, praying together. We need this to remind us to look for God out there and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. And so we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us today. Because what do we say in the Mass, in the, in the Eucharistic prayer? We call the Holy Spirit upon the gift. When I stretch out my hand, we call upon the Holy Spirit that these gifts may be changed into the body and blood of Christ. And after that, after the consecration and everything, part of the prayer says that we pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon all of us. So that God can transform us into the body and blood of Christ. Because that's what the world needs. But it's not easy. And we forget, which is why we're back here again. I wish today that I could celebrate this Mass and we could be here together. And we never have to come again because we've got it all perfectly. 
But I know it's not going to be. And I thank God we can keep coming back to pray, to listen, to renew our faith. And so each Sunday we thank God for what has happened. And we ask the Holy Spirit to guide us.